The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ian Campbell, and I'm the Director of Marketing for Collective Sun. Uh, here at Collective Sun, we like to provide um, resources and uh, information that the nonprofits and uh, other organizations are going to be, um, or is going to be pertinent to them and going to be uh, uh, useful and, and, and informational uh, to, uh, to, 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 to offer to you. So um, in that vein, we, we're, uh, we're happy that we get to present the San Diego Foundation uh, this afternoon. Um, we've got uh, Karen Begin and Danielle Valenciano um, with us today and uh, <coughs> we will uh, have them jump in in just a few minutes here. Uh, first, a couple housekeeping items. Uh, we will be taking uh, questions throughout the, uh, uh, we will be taking questions throughout the, throughout the webinar. So there are, um, there are ways, for, there's a little box for you to ask questions, for you to type questions, and you can also uh, raise your hand and, uh, um, and answer que and ask questions that way. Um, if you do raise your hand, give us, uh, give us a couple minutes and we will, um, as, when, the, when each slide come, uh, comes to a close, we'll, um, we'll, we'll take questions and I'll unmute people one by one and, uh, so, that you can, uh, so that you can ask your question. Um, with that, I would like to introduce Lee Barkin. Lee is the founder of Collective Sun. He's the, the mastermind behind uh, this brilliant idea, and I'm going to let him uh, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, about who Collective Sun is before, uh, before we move on to Karen and Danielle. So go ahead, Matt. Mastermind. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, thank you very much, Ian, for that introduction. And thanks to the Foundation, San Diego Foundation, for welcoming us here. We're all here in San Diego at their beautiful facilities in Liberty Station, and really appreciate the opportunity to come and chat with you and uh, bring some education about the San Diego Foundation to, uh, to the solar audience. So for, for starters, as Ian mentioned, uh, I'm the Chief Community Officer with Collective Sun, and if you haven't heard of Collective Sun before, I'll give you a quick introduction. We are an impact investing platform for nonprofits who want to go solar. That means we work with communities of faith, churches, synagogues, private schools, community service organizations, all manner of 501c3 nonprofits that want to go solar. And if you're a nonprofit who wants to go solar, it turns out that from a financing perspective, the worst thing you can do is go to your community and ask for donations and then go out and purchase a solar system. The reason for that is because as a nonprofit, a tax-exempt organization, you have no ability to utilize the various tax benefits and credits that are available to other organizations, such as commercial and industrial and residential applications. So what we do is we're able to utilize those tax benefits and then pass those savings through to your nonprofits in the form of lower cost energy. So the way our platform works is that instead of going to your community and asking for donations, we go to your community and ask for investments. Those are investments that pay back with annual principal and interest payments. There's a couple reasons for doing that. One, the, the obvious one for the tax benefits and the lower cost power. But the more important one, frankly, is the engagement component. This allows you to go to your community and instead of the annual giving campaign, the traditional tired galas and golf tournaments, this lets you do something different. It lets you go to your community and have them participate in a program that saves the nonprofit money through their energy bill and also has some benefit for them as investors. So it's nice about investments. Uh, first of all, they're a lot easier to ask for than donations. Um, but second of all, it gives people skin in the game. And, and that's the key. Engagement is all about getting more people involved in the organization, encouraging more volunteers, having more relevance in the community, all of those other intangible benefits that are created when you have a program that gets more people involved. So that's a little bit about Collective Sun, and we're going to shift the program now to Karen Begin and Danielle Valenciano, who are going to talk to you a little bit more about the San Diego Foundation. The Foundation, uh, on a personal note, has been a great uh, friend. I've been a longtime fan, admirer, and supporter for many years. They do great things in our San Diego community. And we thought that the, the listeners on this call, who is a great, great mixed audience of solar installers, of nonprofits, academics, uh, some folks from the financial world, 
So what we all have in common on this call is that we're interfacing with the nonprofit world in one capacity or another. And so it's a great benefit for you to be able to talk intelligently about the San Diego Foundation, what they do, know when it's the right time to make an introduction. You now have two friends in the foundation who can help you with connecting to resources and um, raise awareness about what the foundation does and ultimately be a better resource for your nonprofit or your clients, as the case may be, as you're out and about in the San Diego community. So again, um, thank you to the San Diego Foundation, and I'll hand it over to Karen and Danielle. Thank you so much, Lee. Uh, my name is Karen Begin. I'm the Associate Vice President of Charitable Giving here at the San Diego Foundation. And I wear many hats um, at the foundation. I work um, with our Center for Charitable Giving. I work with our Center for Civic Engagement. And I'm out and about in the community dealing with not only nonprofits, but donors um, and businesses um, of many different, many different types. And I think I met Lee at one of those uh, meetings or convenings or breakfast gatherings long ago, and um, he had already known about the foundation. But I'm always happy to share a little bit more. The foundation does a lot, so as we're talking and as we're kind of going through this overview, please don't hesitate to ask questions, uh, either clarifying questions, or if we don't touch on a topic that you want to know more about, please let us know. So I'm going to start off um, just by sharing that community foundations have grown significantly from simply serving donor needs. There are now over 700 community foundations in the country. Um, the San Diego Foundation and most community foundations adhere to the standards of the Council on Foundations. It's sort of a better giving seals of approval, if you will, but the Council of Foundations is a national organization that really helps keep us in check um, as far as all of the work that we do with the community. And they um, clarify six characteristics of community foundations that I thought I would share. Uh, number one, they have a flexible yet permanent collection of funds supported by a wide range of donors. Number two, community foundations have relative independence to determine the best use of those funds to meet community needs. Community foundations all have a governing board of volunteers who are knowledgeable about their community and are recognized for involvement in civic affairs. Community foundations have a commitment to provide leadership on pervasive community problems. Number five is they have a commitment to assist donors to identify and attain their philanthropic goals. And number six, there is an, ad an adherence to a sense of community that overrides individual interests and concerns. So while we do work with individual donors to help them with their individual philanthropic goals, we do have that greater sense of community to really benefit the San Diego region. The next slide, um, this is a really quick slide, but I like to share that the very first community foundation was founded in 1914 in Cleveland, Ohio. I like to share that, um, one reason, because it's 100 years old this year, which is kind of exciting, and number two, because I'm from Cleveland, so it's a little sense of pride there. Um, the San Diego Foundation was founded in 1975, so we'll be 40 years old next year. Um, we started off with $210,000, and today we manage over $660 million in assets. I like to talk about the San Diego Foundation as a triangle, a big, giant, equilateral triangle, where one side you have the Center for Charitable Giving. The Center for Charitable Giving provides services to individuals and corporations that assist with current and legacy giving. Current meaning they're making those donations now, Legacy, meaning they have a fund set up as a placeholder for when they pass away to receive assets that will be distributed by the foundation. The second side of the triangle is our regional affiliates. Um, we have nine regional affiliates that are building participation and pooling monies to make a difference in their local community. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. The third side of the triangle is our Malin Burnham Center for Civic Engagement. And that Center for Civic Engagement is charged with implementing shared solutions to issues that were identified through a visioning process. About two years ago, we completed uh, the greater, uh, I'm sorry, our Greater San Diego Vision. And through that, we had you know, thousands of participants voice what they thought were the biggest challenges our region is going to face over the next 50 years. So now that's what all of our programs center on. And we'll hear a little bit more about that um, in a future slide coming up. So over the past um, 
year, since, since our founding, we've granted over $852 million into the San Diego region. And that translates into about $50 million in a year, $50 million a year recently, in recent years. Um, so that's, that's a lot of money that has gone through. Important to know is that 98% of those grantable dollars are donor advised or donor directed. They are not uh, allocated by the San Diego Foundation's board, by any of our competitive grant making processes, or any of that. So uh, that only leaves 2% at the foundation's discretion for grant making uh, for programs that we identify and through our regional affiliates. I mentioned briefly about the Center for Civic Engagement, and I just wanted to now talk a little bit in detail about the programs of the Center. So the Center was founded, the Center for Civic Engagement was founded with the idea that collaboration and partnerships between businesses, government, academia, and philanthropy can make progress that would not be possible with each sector working on its own. In short, grant making alone can't address the challenges that our region is going to face. We can't throw enough money at some of the big issues like education, like housing, like the environment to make a difference. So we really need to partner with businesses and government and academia um, to, to, make some, to move the needle in those areas. And so now through the lens of civic engagement and community participation, we're working to advance four major initiatives, which you see up on the screen the climate initiative, education, opening the outdoors, and vibrant neighborhoods and resilient region, which involves jobs, housing, transportation, arts and culture, uh, really sort of making our uh, neighborhoods great. So the work is done in, par in partnership, as I said, with nonprofits, government, um, the colleges that are in the region, and business. And our role at the center is, to prim is primarily in the form of grant making, research, bringing all of our collaborators together, and building regional awareness to engage the public. So some highlights from the past year. I'll start with our climate initiative. Um, we co-founded the Climate Collaborative um, to share expertise and leverage resources for efficient regional climate action planning and implementation. We built regional preparedness for extreme weather events like fires um, by supporting collaboration between county offices of emergency services Ickley Local Governments for Sustainability, and Scripps Institute of Oceanography. We invested $125,000 in nonprofits that are working to advocate for convenient transportation options. That $125,000 actually helped secure $2 billion for biking and walking infrastructure that will help lower regional emissions throughout the county. And we also engaged more than 350 business and civic leaders that will raise public awareness on the issue of climate change. Uh, the education initiative is focusing primarily on uh, early childhood education. We call it 3 to 3, focusing on age 3 to 3rd grade. So we instituted in the last year and a half a school readiness assessment training for teachers and principals in the Chula Vista and Lemon Grove school districts. We increased emphasis on social emotional development that touched more than 70 school teachers working with more than 1,000 students in those regions. The Opening the Outdoors initiative um, had a lot of activity this year. The Borderfield State Park Binational Nature Gateway Project, say that three times fast, <laughs> um, we engaged residents in the United States and Mexico to adopt, clean up, and beautify sister parks. So one, Borderfield State Park is in the United States, and one is in Mexico. So that was great. We had volunteer events with that in addition to some of the granting that we uh, provided to the organizations working on that. We also invested $178,000 in conservation catalyst grants and loans to six organizations who are working on critical conservation projects throughout San Diego County. We invested $200,000 to advance work along the San Diego River that includes interactive mapping, uh, supporting the building and reconstruction of a field station, and also completing the river gateway that goes from Ocean Beach to Mission Valley. Um, so there'll be some new uh, trail enhancements along that part of the San Diego River. In our Vibrant Neighborhoods and Resilient Region initiative, uh, we provided job opportunities for 10 artists through our Creative Catalyst Fellowship Program. And each of these artists actually leveraged their funding to provide other San Diego artists with many work opportunities. And we had many free and low-cost exhibitions and performances for hundreds of community residents. We launched the Great Neighborhood Challenge and established partnerships with the University of San Diego to pilot this leadership program 
that will complement the grants that are received for 60 participants. And we're collaborating with the City of San Diego, nonprofit organizations, and community groups to increase civic engagement efforts specifically around transportation-oriented development. Uh, so that's a little bit about what we are doing um, and what we have done. We're going to continue to make strides, hopefully, in all of those initiatives. Um, we're in the process of updating our website. So if you go to the website now, what you see will be a little bit broad as far as descriptions of those initiatives. But stay tuned because that website uh, update is coming soon in the next few months. I mentioned regional affiliates. Uh, we have nine of them. So this kind of shows you where our regional affiliates are. In Oceanside, Escondido, Ramona, Carlsbad, Rancho Bernardo, Forest Ranch del Sur, La Jolla, Chula Vista, and our newest affiliate in San Ysidro, in addition to the San Diego Women's Foundation. So all of these affiliates work with the pooled philanthropy model. So they pool their resources together, make contributions, and then um, by a voting process actually decide where those grants are going to go. So they typically have discovery committees who are out in the community looking at you know, which nonprofits will fit in with um, the, the work that they're trying to forward or, or move forward the needles that they're, that they're trying to move. And then they um, convene different meetings, different, um, they have different grant processes at different times throughout the year. But that's one way that nonprofits can actually receive competitive grant funding through the foundation is through our affiliates and the Women's Foundation. Um, I think this is a good time to transition to our nonprofit resources program. So Danielle, take it away. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm going to change the screen here real quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so my name is Danielle. I'm director of nonprofit resources here. I've been here for about three years now. And I, I just wanted to briefly go over some of the different things that we offer nonprofits within the San Diego County community. I think our overall goal at the foundation when it, when it comes to working with nonprofits is to be a resource for them and to actually give them either hands-on, whether it be help with competitive funding or hands-on help with capacity building to ensure that nonprofits within our community stay as vibrant and I don't even know if sustainable is the right word, probably thriving is a better word um, in San Diego County. Um, we want to make sure you guys are around for the long haul so that you continue to provide great services to people who need it. And that needs never going, is not going away anytime soon. So we offer a number of services, um, like I said. One of which is, I think the question I get asked most often is about competitive grant funding. As Karen had alluded to, only 2% of, of all funding, of all funds here at the foundation are considered discretionary, meaning that we have the ability to give it out, give the money out, um, and that's not donor advised. Um, I would say that the nine affiliates that Karen just mentioned at this point are, are the best opportunity that you as a nonprofit would have for competitive grant funding. Um, it, even though these are located in different communities, I think the, the great thing about it is that as long as your organization provides that particular service, whatever the focus is for that year, uh, within that one community among others, you're eligible for that type of funding. So I would say check our website often because this, the grant cycles come and go pretty, pretty, re, pretty um, frequently. And even I am not apprised as to all the different dates for, for when these grant cycles come up. So I, too, am always referring to the, to the website when I'm looking for competitive grant opportunities. Um, they are there, though. Other things we offer, um, we... Uh, I'm about to hit the number on the phone to scroll down on <laughs> other than the computer. Sorry about that. Um, another thing that, that we are really, really big on is endowment building. Um, obviously, as a community foundation, this is one of our larger goals, is to build endowments so that we have monies available for you as nonprofits for, for the future and for always. As long as you're in existence, you will have this funding, a funding source, a permanent funding source that you don't ever have to fundraise for anymore. So we have currently three, about 300 nonprofit endowments that we manage here at the foundation. Um, that's actually one of, one of the things I do for a total value of about $57 million. This is a really a fairly large chunk of our, of our total endowment uh, dollars. It's about um, a sixth of our total endowment dollars. So 
nothing to sneeze at. We are we're happy to meet with any nonprofit who's considering, who feels like they're at the right place, that they're interested in starting an endowment. Um, happy to meet with anyone who, who has questions. And during this, during my presentation, if you do have questions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, we're watching for that. Uh, <clears throat> what's the purpose of an endowment? Or what is an endowment? Some of you may not even know what an endowment is. It's a permanent fund set up by your organization for your organization. Um, once you set up this fund, the, the principal stays with the foundation as a, it's a permanent asset of the foundation, but you as a nonprofit will receive 5% annually from, um, from investment earnings and interest from, and added to the principal of the fund. So what, what, why do this? It's a stable source of, of funding in an economic downturn. It's an opportunity for innovation above your annual budget. So this, is, this gives you space and freedom. You know, if you are thinking about maybe trying some other type of fundraising, and but you're worried because you need you need to have some stable source always coming in, this is what an endowment can provide you. Security for the future of your mission. You may very well have donors who specifically want to give to, to something like an endowment because they want to make sure that those dollars are there for the long haul. Um, and then, you know, beyond major and, and annual gifts, endowments are the ultimate gifts. There's also um, planned giving services that we offer too. We, this is a free service we offer to nonprofits who are interested. We can create a brochure for you. If you have donors who may have an interest in planned gifts or you just think you might have donors who, who are interested, we can create this brochure, PDF it, your name, your logo, your photo, send it your way, and then you can just put it in a newsletter. It doesn't have to be a hard um, marketing process. It can be fairly simple. Um, but again, if you're interested, please feel free to, to let me know. As far as our endowments and our investments, um, I'm going to hand it back over to Karen really quick to, to give a little more detail about um, how we invest our money here. Sure. Um, the investment strategy for the foundation um, is really to you know, acquire returns that are driven by, driven by asset allocation. And our asset allocation is based on historical and expected risk and returns. And our investment committee actually establishes targets for each of the asset classes. So we have active and passive um, investment managers, money managers. Um, and all of our money managers go through disciplined review by staff. We have a chief investment officer here. We also work with an investment consultant, Wurtz & Associates. And we have an investment committee of the Board of Governors. So each year, if not necessary, if it's not necessary to do it more than a year, they review the investment policy. They really look at what's what's happening, and they make changes as necessary um, to our to you know to the money that's being managed. Our ten-year rate of return right now is six point four percent, and our investment summaries for both our endowment and non-endowment fund pools are on the website. So. We'll refer you to the San Diego Foundation website for that, but it's, um, it's information that we're very transparent about. Uh, of course, all of our donors are usually interested in how investments are doing, and when people are considering investments, especially nonprofits with their endowments, they want to make sure that that investment is going to be protected. So we're very conservative in that regard. Um, and there's a lot of oversight by both board and staff. The next slide um, just shows how an endowment could grow um, from year one to year 50. So um, if you establish a, an endowment at the $100,000 level, this slide here states for a family fund, but it would be the same for a nonprofit fund. Um, in year 25, you would have granted to yourselves as nonprofits $186,000 um, out to the community while at the same time keeping a $190,000 balance. By year 50, um, you know, look at those numbers. They're huge. So. Um, endowments can really be a great, um, a great steady stream of income for a nonprofit or from the donor perspective, either corporate or individual, a great way to give back to the community for forever. And now back to Danielle. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Sure. So beyond, beyond endowment building, plan giving, and competitive grant opportunities, what else do we offer the nonprofit community? A um, number of things. We have Capacity building um, in relation to our grant writing workshop, 
and our fundraising school. So we offer seven grant writing workshops every year. This used to be in conjunction with a resource library we hosted here at the foundation. Late last year, we partnered with Nonprofit Management Solutions to actually house the, the foundation center library where you could go for free and look up their database of more than 100,000 grant opportunities throughout the country. We now have their physical library there, but we are actually funding it through an endowment we have here. So we've, we've partnered with them on that. We still offer our grant writing workshops, though, um, on a regular basis. They're fantastic. A couple are full day, um, most are half day. Um, very, very useful information. Our fundraising school, we partner with Indiana University to provide this. This is their School of Philanthropy, um, fantastic program, actually very well renowned um, within, with, throughout the country. We fly the instructors out here to provide a four course certification series to 40 nonprofit professionals. It can be CEOs, directors, um, fundraising managers, as well as even board members we have on occasion sit in on this. Um, it, it's a four course series, it's 12 full day time commitments for $650, which is a steal. Uh, if you were to try and take these courses at Indiana University, you'd pay about $5,000 for it. So um, we really, really believe in the power of making sure that nonprofits are well versed in, in how to get major gifts and fundraise to keep your keep your organizations um, doing doing very well. Danielle, looks like we have a question. Um, when are the next workshops? Oh, okay. Next workshops for grant writing, you can go onto our website. Um, I don't have the date right now, but there is one coming up in July. It's a full day one. So you can go to our website, sdfoundation.org under workshops, I think it's under grants, sorry, you go to grants and then workshops is right underneath and it'll say upcoming workshops. You can just click right there and get the list. Great. Um, and finally, we have better giving. So, oh, thank you. So I'm sure, you know, many nonprofits have heard of better giving. It is Actually, part of GuideStar, um, it is a private label platform that we, um, as well as 15 other community foundations throughout the country, use to offer comprehensive information about not local nonprofits to the community. It's a free database that we that we put out there. It's, it's web-based, and we use it all the time internally um, to help verify and and actually with donor inquiries, we use it quite often. I think our community of, of donor, uh, I'm sorry, community of research, manager of community research, sorry about that, did about 200 reports last year um, by donors who were inquiring about nonprofits. About half of those, they use better giving portraits or profiles to get that information. So we use it all the time. Um, it's, it's a very powerful tool. It's a great tool for nonprofits because it's a way for a nonprofit to kind of see where they are in relation to other organi like-minded organizations, whether or not they have certain policies and procedures in place, how are they doing with their board, is their board di diverse enough. There's lots of things that you can do with Better Giving. You can also accept donations for free. So there's a portal that, um, that anyone who has a Better Giving profile is allowed to, to accept donations from the public. It's a free service we offer. It was also the foundation for our Give Big event that we just had last month on May 6th. This was our second Give Big event. It was an on, one day online day of giving. Um, we had our first one in 2011, it was 36 hours, and it made 2.1 million in donations in that 36 hours from the public to about 315 nonprofits. Last month, 24 hours, it ended up raising over 900,000 um, for 350 nonprofits. So, we use Better Giving. Anyone who wanted to participate had to have a profile. Uh, it was our way of vetting and making sure that the nonprofit was, was prepared, well prepared for this type of event. Fantastic community event. 25% um, of donors self-reported that they were new donors to those organizations. So that was one of our main, main goals was to make sure that we were connecting you with new prospects. Um, and 
Will we have it in the future? That we are unsure of at this point. Um, with a new CEO coming on board in September, it's going to be a discussion point for sure. But we were very, very proud of this event. And um, we know that it's going on all over, all over the country, these types of events. So we would love to do it again. And that, that really is the bulk of, of services that we offer. Um, again, if, if there's something that we don't offer that you're looking for, feel free to contact me um, because I will find that resource for you some way. All right, thank you. If you'd like to enter questions into the question box, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that now. I'll, I'll start off with the, with the first question. Uh, I, I was just kind of curious. You do a lot of education out in the public and, and awareness, and I'm, I'm curious, are, uh, what are the things people are most surprised to learn about the foundation, what you offer, what you do? that maybe they hadn't heard of before? I mean, I would say that the biggest question I get is, we don't know what you do. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I think it's, um, we've all had to finesse our, our 30 second pitch as to what it is that we, uh, that we do. You know, what do we offer the community? And I think that's, that's one of my goals when I talk to nonprofits and getting the word out there is to stress things. Here's all the stuff that we actually can do to help you. And, and I'm sure that's the same with you, Karen. Yeah, you know, I think I talk about the triangle, um, and the reason I do that is, and, and I, I specifically state it's an equilateral triangle because the foundation really does so much in so many different ways um, that, you know, so much of what we do is really providing services to donors. When we're speaking to the nonprofit community or a nonprofit audience, not all of that information is necessarily relevant, um, nor does it translate. You know, when you're providing customer service to donors, that's very different than programs you have for nonprofits in the community, and why should nonprofits connect to the San Diego Foundation? And then the regional affiliates is actually sort of a, in some ways, a little bit of both. They are their own, they each have their own board, so they are sort of their own, they're acting as their own nonprofit, but they are granting um, two nonprofits out in the community who are providing direct services. So our organization is very complex. And I think that, again, that's often the biggest surprise is, oh, I thought you just gave grants. And then, again, you know, I think people are really surprised that only 2% of our assets mm -hmm. are discretionary. You hear $650 million, and of course, as a nonprofit, you're like, well, where's my piece of that? You know, how can I get a, a piece of that? And, you know, again, part of those dollars are endowed, so it's the principal that's reinvested. So of the grantable dollars, 2%, that gives the foundation about $2 million a year to put to all of our programs, um, you know, competitive and, and, you know, also just partnerships we've already established um, for future years. So it's unfortunately not as much as we would like it to do, to be, and, you know, we're working at building that. Um, people are often surprised on the donor services side to hear that they can set up a legacy fund and it doesn't cost any money. Um, that, that there can be this placeholder for them to give back to the community after they pass away, and the foundation can help them with that, and we don't charge for it. You know, it really does pay it forward. Um, we have so many different kinds of funds available here. I think, again, adding to the complexity of the foundation, people are often surprised to hear about that. And then the number of partners we have, nonprofit, business, academic, um, government, I think when, when um, people really get more of a sense of how the foundation is really involved throughout the county in many different ways, shapes, and forms in the community. I get a lot of, oh, you guys are involved with that? Oh, you guys are involved with that. You know, so um, I think lots of surprises constantly on many different levels. I'll tell you, on, on a couple of surprises I experienced, uh, how simple you make it. You, you know, you expect in the philanthropic world for there to be a lot of complex, complicated, financial dense information, but interactions were just made very easy. Both from the nonprofit side, where I serve on a nonprofit board that has an endowment, very easy to interface and operate with, and also from the donor side, uh, the donor advised funds. I was very surprised the low minimum, relatively low in the philanthropic world, still the same. Mm -hmm. $25,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, op to open a donor advised fund uh, with all the, the tax benefits associated with that. Uh, Leave it to the CPA to start talking about tax benefits again. <laughs> um, but the reason why people do it. Yeah, a lot. It, but the simplicity. Uh, to make it simple for people to understand was, was definitely a, a welcome surprise from, from my interaction. 
So we've got a couple other questions. Um, do you act as a fiscal agent for new nonprofits being formed, and what determines that? Great question. Unfortunately, we do not serve as a fiscal agent. There is an organization, though, here in San Diego, Mission Edge, that is serving as fiscal agent. Um, I would highly recommend contacting them. Oh, oh, what is a fiscal and what agent? what is a fiscal agent for folks yes. So a fiscal agent is, serves as kind of an umbrella for an organization that does not have its nonprofit 501c3 status. Maybe they're in process, or maybe they, maybe they will never necessarily get their status, but they could use a larger 501c3 to act as their fiscal agent so they can accept donations through them. Excellent. Another question here, who would I talk to, who would I talk with about the nonprofit being formed, how it fits into the, and I just lost the question. Um, San Diego Foundation San Diego Triangle. San Diego Foundation Triangle, and there was more to it, um, so that they can determine if they wish to publicize it to potential donors. I think several questions here, um, mm -hmm. or several different <laughs> answers to this question maybe. Um, so I think definitely connecting with Mission Edge if you're thinking about starting a nonprofit. Um, another another resource would be Nonprofit Resource Solutions. Um, nonprofit solutions. Management. Nonprofit Management Solutions, sorry. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of questions to ask when you're considering forming a nonprofit. Are the services being provided? Are you just going to do it in a better way? Can you fit in with another nonprofit? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think, Danielle, I would certainly be happy to speak with you um, offline a little bit more detail depending on you know exactly what kind of organization you're looking to form to see how we can help. Um, the second piece of that, uh, how to fit into the foundation triangle, because we don't serve as fiscal agents, it, you know, you would the way you a nonprofit or a new nonprofit would, would fit in is either by becoming a grantee through one of our competitive granting processes or by partnering with us on one of our initiatives. So depending how those things align, it, you know, it, it wouldn't necessarily be an automatic fit. Another way could be by opening a fund, you know, a nonprofit endowment fund, um, getting involved with Better Giving, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, and then Better Giving is the best way to publicize to yep. donors, especially to fund holders at the uh, San Diego Foundation, because they all have access to Better Giving. Actually, anybody has access to Better Giving. Uh, but we do push it out to them. We do remind our donors constantly that if they're looking for nonprofit organizations to invest in, um, they should definitely check out our Better Giving website. Um, and you know, from there, it's, I hate to say it's who you know and who your connections are, but with any nonprofit organization, who's on your board, who can connect to people who are already engaged at the foundation, who may have a donor advised fund at the foundation, who may be a program director of an initiative at the foundation, um, and I think Lee started off this um, webinar by saying, you know, now you guys have two people you can talk to at the foundation. And Danielle and I would be happy to field those questions yeah. um, in a more specific nature. We don't, our, our work, our, the focus of our work with nonprofits is with already established nonprofits. So startups is not really something that we have the, the capacity or skill to do. Um, and like Karen said, You've got Nonprofit Management Solutions, Mission Edge, and then SCORE San Diego is the other place that I would recommend if you're thinking of starting. Because it's such a legal process, it takes about a year to get your status. That's something that we just don't do here. So once you have your 501c3 status, then we can, we can talk. And there's no formal way to become a partner with the foundation. So essentially, what are your needs? And if it's something that matches with what we offer, then, then we work together. And finally, will this uh, recorded presentation be available for review? Of course, it will. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be sending this uh, sending out a link to this as soon as uh, the, uh, the download process uh, is completed, and uh, we'll be sending out some follow up information. And uh, I'm sure that uh, um, we'll have uh, some contact information and more information for uh, from the San Diego Foundation's website uh, address as well. So. Um, yeah, with that, um, unless there are any more questions. I actually have a question. Sure. You mentioned uh, uh, endowment before, um, mm -hmm. talking about the endowments and talking about if you feel that you're ready, uh, if, you, if your nonprofit feels like you're ready for an endowment. Mm -hmm. What is it that I should be looking for um, to, uh, to, to be ready for an endowment? How would I know that I'm ready for an endowment? Sure. Well, I mean, it's a discussion with your board, for one. But it's really thinking about a few things. How long have you been around, number one? So, you know, endowment is long term. So. If you've only been around a couple of years, 
you know, I would, I would say, you know, at least a few years under your belt and you have things moving smoothly. Another thing is, is that you have enough operating funds currently. You're doing okay. You have some reserves is, the, is another thing that I could think of um, to really assess whether or not, you know, an, an endowment, it's, it's an investment, literally and figuratively. So, um, you know, do you have, if, if you're struggling to make, to make your budget every year, probably not the right time. But if you're thinking long term, your board's thinking long term, you have a donor or two who is thinking about this specifically, who's thinking they want to endow this, then I think that's when the conversation starts. Do you have anything to add? I do. I am a big fan of talking about endowment along with legacy giving. So when you have donors who are considering leaving a legacy gift to your organization, or if your organization is at the point where they have a legacy program of some sort, that, that could be a sign that you're potentially ready for endowment and could be a sign that you may want to ask some of these legacy donors if part of their gift could be put into an endowment for forever. So um, I like to think about those things hand in hand. And then that way, if you are continually fundraising for annual dollars, you're not asking people to change their current giving to your organization. You're, you're thinking when they're gone and they're not going to be here giving anymore, by making a gift from their estate into the endowment, they will be giving to your organization forever and ever and ever. So, so just in closing, I think there's some contact information yeah. on the next slide. Absolutely. And this is uh, my contact information and Ian's contact information. And if you want to reach the San Diego Foundation, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to share my direct line and my email address. This is Karen Begin, and it's K-A-R-E-N at sdfoundation.org is my email. And my direct line is 619-814-1325. And my email, and all of our emails are actually on our website. It's Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E, V as in Victor, at sdfoundation.org. And again, on, on behalf of Collective Sun, thank you. Thank You're you thank very you. much to Karen and Danielle for, for joining us today. And thank you for your stewardship of the, in the philanthropic community and everything that the Foundation does. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks. For the folks, uh, the solar installers on the line, thank you for, for what you're doing to bring solar options to the nonprofit community. You know, we started Collective Sun to bring solar options to a group that's been underrepresented in the past. We believe that everybody should have access to clean energy, and, and nonprofits, uh, chief among that list, uh, who have been left out of this conversation, you're doing great work to bring solar to everybody. And to our nonprofits on the line, uh, thank you for what you do to make our communities a better place. And with that, and with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, we'll uh, we will um, be sharing this uh, the record presentation and uh, in a follow-up email afterwards. And thank you again to Karen and Danielle. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Well, have a great day.